The recipe says that you can use, you can either knead this by hand or you can knead it in a mixer. And because of the event I'm going to today, I need to double the recipe and I thought I would make one recipe in the mixer and one recipe by hand and let you see the difference. Normally I would probably just throw it all in here in a mixer and make it like that. But kneading bread is nothing to be afraid of. And there were years in my life where I didn't have a mixer. So I learned to make bread by hand and it is so not scary and it is so easy to do. So I thought we'd do both. Okay, so basically we've, we're starting off with two and a half cups of flour and the ingredients are exactly the same for both, the, both ways that I'm doing this. So I'm gonna take the two and a half cups of flour and I'm gonna put it in the mixer. And I've got two and a half cups of flour here for mixing the, hand, the dough by hand. Um, the next thing we're going to do is add sugar and yeast. Now yeast, I'm going to add sugar to this as well to the... So I'm gonna take the two and a half cups of flour and I'm gonna put it in the mixer. Um, the next thing we're going to do is add sugar. Yeast is an interesting conversation. Um, back when I was in my 20s and um, cooking all the time, you had to bloom yeast, which meant you had to put yeast in a you know in a dish and then add some sugar and some warm water and activate the yeast over the years yeast has changed they've i don't know exactly what they've done to it but you don't always need to bloom your yeast and in this particular recipe i've made it before i am not going to do that i'm not going to bloom it um, the recipe calls for a rapid rise I don't like rapid rise. It changes the texture of the bread. And so I just use regular yeast. I happen to find this product and this is a high activity dry yeast. I think it's from Italy. It's the best yeast I've ever used. And this one works both ways. I can bloom this and I can um, just put it in and it will work. And this recipe has worked fine with not blooming this. So I am going to put this in next. And that is two and a half teaspoons of yeast, which is about one of those packages that you, you can buy in the grocery store. And I used, <clears throat> I've used other yeasts my whole life. I just happened to discover this one lately. Um, so at this moment in time, I am going to mix this. I have to add the salt next. And I don't like adding the salt on top of the yeast because it kind of, bothers the yeast sometimes and I don't want to take a chance so I'm just going to turn this on and mix it up a little bit and then put the salt in. Okay so now I'm going to put the salt in and then I've got 7 eighths to 1 cup of flour in this I mean of water in this cup and it's warm water and it's not warm anymore I'm going to warm it up hold on. So the temperature of warm water is approximately 100 degrees. I've always learned that if you can stick your finger in the water and hold it there for 10 seconds, you're good. If you make the water too hot, it's going to kill the yeast and you're not going to get a rise on it. So this is a cup of water, measuring water, put it on the table and make sure it's a light, slightly above the line. You want to make sure the middle of it is with exactly with the line. And I'm going to turn this on. And I'm just going to start pouring the water in. I'll leave this alone <clears throat> and let that mix. So this needs to mix for about five minutes. And I had, I had a choice of several, um, I had several choices with which to beat this bread with. Normally with a bread dough, you would go to a bread hook eventually. This is such a small amount of bread dough 
and it's so loose that I don't need this one today and it doesn't do a good job. This is a regular cake um, attachment and this one, it would all get stuck to this. So I've chosen to use um, a paddle, they call it, in this. And what's gonna happen, and this works really well because it's kind of a combination of the two. And so what's gonna happen with this is it's gonna get more and more cohesive and it's going to, you want it kind of stretchy and loose. And so we're gonna let that go for five minutes and we'll be back. Okay, so I'm about two and a half minutes into this and I took a look at it and realized that it was sticking to the bottom. So I'm just going to stop this for a brief moment and I'm going to just dig up what's on the bottom of this. As you can see, this has changed from flour and you know separate ingredients to a nice soft dough. So it's doing exactly what it should be doing. Now, up until this point, I've had the mixer on the low end of medium. Um, if you have a, this has got a quite a large motor, but I've had mixers in the past that, you know, I, that were not this powerful and you just, you know, adjust it so that it's just mixing nicely. You'd probably want to go to a medium at that point. Whatever mixer you have is fine. A hand mixer works. It's not, it takes a little bit longer sometimes, but, um, this, any mixer that you have works. Whoops. That was the two and a half minutes. So I'm going to put this back on and I am going to increase the speed this time to a little bit faster so that it leaves the dough and gets a little bit more mixed up. So I will turn this, I will pull this back up and turn it on a little bit higher so that it's, it's mixing the way I want it to. Okay. Okay, I like that. So this, I don't know if you can see this, but this is falling off of the beater and that's what I wanted. I wanted it to um, cohese together and just have this loose dough that it's kind of sticky, but it's okay. I'm gonna put it, it's really sticky, but this is the type of dough it is, but it looks, it looks beautiful. I could probably add a little bit of flour to that, but I'm not going to because I have made this before and every time I think I need to add flour to it, it makes the, the breadsticks harder. And this is the lightest breadstick recipe I've ever used. So I'm going to leave this alone. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some grease in a bowl and then put the yeast, the dough in there. Now you can use spray, you can use, you know, something like Pam or, you know, to put, I have grown up, my parents took us to South Carolina every year and at that point in time they used lard, they used, they had a bacon vat, bacon grease vat that they used, so I'm, I was, I grew up being used to having some lard <laughs> in the food and it, the spray is great. Probably I'm using about a teaspoon of flour of grease. It makes a difference. You don't have to use it. It's just very subtle, but I'm, I can't stop myself from doing this because it just, it does make, it does make a, a large difference in, in, to the taste of this. And so I just, I just, I don't like getting the shortening on my hand. So I take a baggie and and just put it on like that. And then I take my food scraper again and I scrape that up and I just put it in there and I turn it over. And there it shall sit. And then I'm gonna take my kitchen towel and I'm gonna put that over there and I'm gonna let that rise for 30 minutes. And that's at room temperature. I've used heating pads. I've used the heating, the warming piece in the oven. And I find that bread, the texture of bread, if you let it rise at room temperature, just naturally, is so much nicer than it is if any other way to do it. I have done it every way imaginable. And this, this, is, this is my favorite way as far as texture is concerned. So we will be back in about 30 minutes. Get 
two and a half cups of flour here for mixing the hand, the dough by hand. I'm gonna add sugar to this as well. To the Okay, now we're gonna add our yeast and I'm gonna stir this in with a whisk and just mix this up. And now that I have that mixed up, I'm going to add the salt. And then I'm going to add, add the warm water. And I'm gonna add this. So when it gets like that and you can't really stir it anymore, it's not effective because all the dough has gone inside. I just clean out the whisk and start with a spoon. Sometimes I can get away with it for a little bit longer than that, but not today. Okay, so I'm gonna take a spatula and I'm gonna start mixing that together. So we're gonna add a little bit more of that water. Okay, so that's mixed up enough so that I can now take this out and I'm just going to put a little bit more flour on the board I, just to make sure that it doesn't stick right to begin with but okay and then I'll put this over here and I'm just going to start kneading this and it's kind of a sticky dough so the more I knead it the more it's going to get sticky and I want this to look loose and you'll see it change as we go along but this is miserable to work with when you're when you're kneading because it's so it's kind of like focaccia and you kind of have to this is one of those breads that you oh whoops <laughs> if you slam it down and continue to do that it makes it a little bit easier You're looking for a kind of a shiny. We can add more flour, but I know I don't want to. This is where this comes in handy. Just start folding it over. At this point, I just kind of keep my hands floured, but try not to add too much flour to the dough because it's much lighter bread dough. But you can see it's already changing the way it's looking. See, even though it's it's still damp, it's not sticking to my hands as much. Sometimes in the middle of this, I can't. The, it, you get a better feel if you can touch it, but the extra dough on my hands is making it stick to my hands. So I take some flour, and I just grind that off off to the side, and that way I can feel the the dough better as it's as it's progressing through its cycle. So I just leave that over there. <coughs> and back at it, and that's much better. It's not sticking to my hands as much. So 
So you're going to do this for about five minutes and we'll just stay right here while I do this because it is interesting to see the ch changes it makes. And I'm tempted to add more flour to it at this point because it's still sticking, but I'm not going to do that. I can, I can knead it well enough at this point that I don't, I know I don't need to add any more flour, but it is annoying. <laughs> See how it's getting, this is still bumpy here, but there's definitely some smoothness going on. So I'm looking for kind of a smooth, at this point it's more like pasta dough than focaccia. seen the pasta video I put up I talk about zenning out I zen out a lot <laughs> there's a lot of mixing dough like I said when I first started cooking I made everything by hand couldn't afford a mixer or things like that and I just this is how I was actually taught to make bread and it's kind of my default loved ones out there this is this can this whole recipe can be totally made vegan just by the nature of the bread dough how smooth that's getting. It's not quite there yet. Pick it up and slap it. I'm quite happy with that. I think I'll leave that alone. As I say, I'll leave it alone and I keep going, but really, I mean, I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Okay. That looks fine. So now we're gonna take the bowl. Once again, you can use Pam or anything you want to. I'm gonna use a little bit of shortening. I only use Crisco for everything that I make as far as 
when I do use shortening. It's the best there is. It makes your pie doughs better. I don't know what it is, but it's just really good. I don't, it's great. So I would recommend Crisco. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in, turn it over, and then cover it with my towel. And we'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, we're back. Um, so I've made two batches of the breadsticks that I'm making today. Um, this is the one that was made in the mixer. I did not add any additional flour afterwards to get it kneaded because the mixer had done the kneading properly. This is the one that I kneaded by hand. This one hasn't quite finished rising yet, but you can tell that this is this because I had to add a little bit more flour to get it going as far as the kneading. Um, this one is a little thicker than this one. This one is so light and airy. That's a big bubble. These are big bubbles right here. So this breadstick theoretically is going to come out a lot, not a lot, but quite a bit lighter than this one. If you were eating them separately, you wouldn't know the difference, but it's interesting to do experiments like this because you can see what happens. So this one, no extra flour. It was beat in a mixer. And so it's going to be a little bit lighter. And this one is a, had a little bit of extra flour added to get it going. I didn't have to do that, but it made it, it was cheating basically. It made it a little easier to, to mold and to, to knead into the dough. This will still be delicious. And if you didn't, if we hadn't done this together, you wouldn't have known the difference, but that, I just thought that was an interesting little tidbit. Okay, so here we are, we're going to take, this is the dough that I made in the um, mixer, and I am going to shape these into 24 breadsticks. The first thing you want to do is just drop that out of the pan, and put this over here, and you basically don't want to do too much to this, you don't want to squish it down or anything all that nice rising um, we're gonna squish it when we roll them into breadsticks so I just leave that alone um, this is my handy dandy tape measure which I keep on this counter for all times because when it says something should be a certain length I just I feel like I have it in my head but it's nice to have something to just measure by so I just keep that there pull it out and use it so this is the dough you can do this one of two ways you can either do this by eye i'm going to separate this in 24 different pieces or you can weigh them i i go i vacillate back and forth i'm not going to weigh them today because not everyone has a scale and you can do it just as easily this way they might not be perfect but they look very rustic and authentic so we'll just go with that today so what i'm going to do is cut this in half this way and then I'm just going to cut each side into 12 pieces and some of these may be if, if I see any glaring differences I'm I'll, I'll fix it as I go along so separate those after you've cut them so they and these are these are too small so I'll deal with that in a minute but okay so then I just kind of ball them up a little bit so I can eyeball these and see where 
I need to add or take away from some of these. So this one is obviously too big and I just start adding to these dough balls. And I'll just continue to do that as I go along. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is get a few of these out of the way. And this can be done in a couple of different ways, but you're basically trying to make a long stick out of this. You can go like this and you keep pulling and stretching and the longer it sits on the counter, the easier this is to do. But basically, and these do rise up in the oven, so they look a little anemic right now, but basically you just put them on. I have parchment paper on this, on here. You can spray that down as well. Um, but if you, were, if you don't have parchment paper, that's absolutely fine. You can just spray some Pam or put some, you know, oil on there and lay them down. But if you're not using the parchment paper, you really should grease your pan. Okay, so this one is a little bit bigger than, and so then I just keep going and I do 24 of these. And you can put them very close together on the, on the sheet pan and, and that's fine. What happens if you place them close together is that they all, cook together and there aren't any edges. I personally today want them to be separate and I'm not going to put them too close together. I want them to all be brown on each side. You get a little when I first started doing this I would end up with really thin pieces and you kind of just have to roll and be aware of what you're doing but like if you do get a fat piece you can um, pull it apart a little bit and it will it will take care of itself I don't like this one so I'm going to add another little bit of this one and start over and the more you handle this the more difficult it gets to stretch it out so you don't want to fold it up too many times but that one was obviously not big enough Okay, so I think I can put one more on there. And you don't want to push down really hard, you just want to gently roll this along. Okay, after I put these on, I realized that I had forgotten the last step before they go into the oven, which is to take a half a cup of warm water and a teaspoon of sugar <clears throat> and gently quickly dip these in and it just gives it a really nice outer coating I've left one here to show you so here is the piece that we were doing and I just put it in the water and make sure it's not sopping wet and put it back on the, the tray 
And now this tray goes into a 475 degree oven for, um, let's see, five, about five, let's see, is it five minutes? Eight to nine minutes. And so I have this oven preheated. Preheating an oven, you should preheat an oven for at least 20 minutes, usually half an hour. And just because the temperature in there says it's at, at temp, it's much better to get everything in there hot, not just where it's reading the temperature. So I usually turn the oven on about a half an hour before I get ready to bake at least. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put these in and I'm going to put this timer on. These timers are awesome. Sometimes people say they don't work and most of the time when that happens is because you have to turn these all the way to the zero. So you take the dial, I'll do it again. You so you take this dial and you turn it all the way around to zero and then back to the time that you want your item to cook. And so now I have it on eight minutes and we'll check those at eight minutes. But awesome timer. Okay, so I'm gonna check these and they're not quite done. So I'm gonna put this on for another two minutes. And I'll keep going with these. And the next step in this and is to take a pastry brush and some melted butter, salted butter, um, and brush it down. These are warm, very warm. And you're gonna brush this on each of the pretzels. I mean on the breadsticks, they're not pretzels. And this really makes these things. If you're um, a vegan, you can do this with uh, warm water or you can do it with vegan butter. They either works just as well. And once you have them brushed with butter or water or vegan butter, I have pretzel salt and I'm just going to take it from up here and salt these. And if you don't, if it's not sticking from up high, you can get down a little closer and just to taste. The salt is very salty, so you just have to be a little careful. And that is just about done. And as soon as that pan cools off a little bit, I will um, put those on a rack. I'll take my rack that I'm lining these up on and move these over and just start putting them some more. And this way they don't sweat on the bottom and they get as, you know, not, you don't want them crispy, but they don't sweat and get all mushy. So it's really important to use racks. Okay. Simple, just a few steps, and it goes great with the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. <laughs> breadcrumbs. <laughs> bread I can't stop saying breadcrumbs.